Hello everyone, today I'll be showing you how to color grade Mavic 2 D-Log M footage inside of DaVinci Resolve. Now this tutorial is aimed towards more advanced users, but I'll try to explain even the beginner level stuff. If you get lost, feel free to comment down below and ask me if anything is left unclear. Even though I'll be cutting out unnecessary parts, this tutorial will be split in two parts because I'll be grading five shots. In this video we'll only scratch in the advanced territory and in the next one we'll get into a bit more details. All of the looks I'll be creating in this video and many more can be purchased as LUTs on the link down below with the special New Year's discount code of 80% of the whole store until January 7, 2019. Now with everything out of the way, let's jump right in. Alright, so once you import all of your clips into Resolve and bring them into a timeline, go in the color tab to start color grading. If there's no node already created, create a new one with Alt S on your keyboard. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply the official D-Log M to Rec 709 LUT. I've already imported it into Resolve, if you don't know how to do it, check out my video on the topic. Alright, so now we correct it for the Rec. 709 color space. The next thing we should do is we should denoise our footage. But since the free version of DaVinci doesn't come with built-in noise reduction, I'm going to skip this step for now. But you always should denoise your footage before color grading. I'm gonna nade my node, LUT. Then I'm going to create a new serial node and white balance my shot. I can white balance it manually by looking at scopes over here, or I can pick my white point and white balance it that way. We do have some white and grey areas in this shot, but since this was shot in a sunset, I'm going to correct it manually. With the node selected, I'm gonna find the temperature slider down here, and correct my white balance by looking at the video scopes. Now even though I'm going to aim for this shot to be a bit warmer, the nice thing about DaVinci Resolve is that it's non-destructive, so we can easily warm up our shot in the next node and nothing will get destructed. Now I'm going to check if my white balance is correct. I'm gonna go in the power window tab and select the freeform window. I'm gonna draw a power window around the white car and select the highlight button. And then I'm gonna look at my car in the parades. Now as we can see by the scopes, our car is a bit too cold and it should be white, so we're gonna warm up the picture a bit. Then I'm gonna add some tint to correct the greens. And there we go, now it should be corrected. I'm gonna turn off the power window and disable the highlight and fit to view. And there we go, this is before and this is after. I'm gonna label my node white balance. Now we're ready to get into the primary correction. I'm gonna create a new serial node and label it exposure. There's many ways to change the exposure, I prefer with the curves. I'm just gonna bring up the curves a bit to get more of my image in the mid-tone section. Alright, that's looking pretty nice. This is before and this is after. Now there is already a lot of contrast in this scene naturally because it was shot at the sunset, but I'm just gonna create a new node and label it contrast, just so that I can get back to it and add some contrast if I wanted to. But for now I'm gonna leave this node without changing anything. Okay, so the next thing I like to do is I like to add a bit of saturation. I'm gonna add a new node name it saturation and I'm gonna find the saturation slider down here. There's no need to go overboard, just a nice value of 60, 65 will do nice. This is before and this is after. We can go to 65 but anything over that just looks really fake and really ugly. Alright, 
All right, so this is nice primary correction for this first shot. I'm gonna create a new serial node and bring it back down here just so that I can differentiate what's my primary correction and what's my secondary. In the secondary correction, we're gonna add a bit more greens into these trees and we're gonna create our final look. We can label this node green trees and then we're gonna go into the qualifier tab. The way the qualifier works is that we can select a certain color on our footage and we can select it that way. I'm just gonna select this green and then I'm going to highlight what is selected. As we can see, not much is selected and there's not much to work with. But with changing these values, we can select more of our greens. So first off, I'm gonna widen my selection in the hues. And finally, I'm going to expand the luminance just a bit. Then we can select the tool to add to our range. This way we are introducing more yellows, so we can zoom out back and we can see that much more is selected. Then we need to refine our selection with the matte finesse. First off, I'm gonna zoom in a bit to my picture. Then I'm going to denoise just a bit clean the blacks and clean the whites and then I'm going to add just a bit of blur. Now we can see that all of our greens and yellows are selected so we can disable the highlight and fit the video to screen. Now once we selected something with the qualifier we can use any other tools Resolve offers to change our image. I'm gonna go back into my curves and expose the trees just a bit more. We can see the before and after. I'm gonna introduce a bit more saturation to the trees by 60. And finally, I'm going to offset my gamma to the green. There we go, much nicer. Here's before and here's after. Then we can add another serial node and work on our final look. Now for this first shot, I'm going to keep it simple and I'm just gonna add a bit of yellow orange to our gain and a bit of blues to our shadows. Here's before and here's after. I think I can do a bit more blues. Now as we can see we have a bit too much blue in our highlights and in the scopes we can see that our highlights are lifted in the greens so we're gonna go in the log correction and lower our shadows a bit and compensate for the green. And there we go, I'm pretty happy with this first look. I'm gonna select everything but the LUT and by pressing CTRL or CMD D on your keyboard disable or enable your nodes. We can see how much we can get from the D-Log footage. Alright, so let's get on to the next shot. Here we have this oil refinery and I'm gonna really go for that moody look. Alright, so the first step as always is to apply the official D-Log M to Rec 709 LUT. One thing I should mention is that you should really get accustomed to labeling your nodes just so that once you go back to your footage and back to your grades you don't get confused on what's what. And I forgot to label this one. Alright, so let's add a new serial node. Remember this should be your denoise node. And just for those who are working in Resolve Studio and not the free version, I'm going to denoise this clip. I always denoise with spatial noise reduction and using the luma and chroma sliders. I'm gonna unlink them. I always input 2 in my luma and 10 in my chroma. Now this is not much of a noise reduction, but noise reduction is necessary for any kind of color grading on any kind of software. If we disable this node, we can see the difference in the scopes. Even though there's not much of a difference in the picture itself. Alright, so I'm gonna create a new node 
and white balance the shot. For the techniques I explained in the previous clips, I'm not gonna go over them in the details, just so that we move along quicker. Now this shot wasn't shot at the sunset and we have whites and grays in it, so I'm gonna white balance the shot with a color picker. We can see the before and after. Then I'm gonna add a new node and add some contrast. To set myself off, I like to use the contrast slider and then add a bit of a curve. Alright, so this is before and after, already looking much better. Now I really don't like how this sky turned out. It's really cloudy and not at all interesting. So I'm gonna blow it up on purpose. I'm gonna create a new node and go into the power windows. And now we're gonna use the gradient power window. We can select the highlight to see what we are doing. Alright, so now we can start grading, but if we do anything to this shot, let's say this for example, you can see that our power window isn't tracked. So we need to go back to our first frame and firstly track our power window. We're gonna do this by going in the tracker tab. DaVinci Resolve has really good built-in tracking, so we're just gonna track forward. Alright, so once the tracking is done, we can do our grade. For the sky, I'm simply gonna lift my gain and gamma. And then I'm gonna desaturate it. Now this doesn't look so good for now, but once we build our image, it's going to look perfect. Here's before and here's after. Alright, so now we're going to add the parallel node. Now, as you can tell by this diagram, the parallel node doesn't take into account what we did to the sky, but takes the image that's coming from the contrast node, works with it, and then mixes it back with the sky. So for this node, we're going to desaturate our image. I'm not gonna go overboard, maybe like 40. All right, that looks nice. Now we can add a serial node next to this desaturation node and it will get mixed in together with the desaturation and the sky after this node. Now for this node I'm going to desaturate just the orange parts of this image. We're going to do that with the qualifier. I'm gonna select this sand right here, go into my highlights. All right. So we're going to widen our selection. All right, the selection is looking pretty good. I'm going to add to my selection these bushes. And I'm going to lower my luminance selection. All right, and now we can desaturate just the oranges. Maybe even more. All right, it's looking pretty nice. And now I'm going to add just a bit of greenish teal to my shadows. Just by moving it a bit, we can already see a big difference and I really like how this is turning out. Next what we're going to do is we're going to darken the sea. By right clicking on the empty spot, add node, corrector. We're gonna link the contrast and then add a new input to our parallel mixer and linking that up. So again, this node won't affect these three and neither of these will affect the sky.
The way we're going to darken the sea is again by using the qualifier and the combination of a power window. You should have already gotten a grasp of this, so I'm gonna speed up the video just a bit. And now I'm adding a custom power window like before. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to track it. Now I will pause the tracking because my power window will enter my frame. So I'm gonna switch to frame and adjust it manually and then track it again. All right, so that's done. We're gonna go back in the power window tab and soften up the edges of the power window. All right, and then we're gonna go into the curves and darken the C just a bit. All right, that's already looking pretty nice. All right, so now we can start finishing up our image. For this shot, I'm gonna add a bit of mid-tone contrast, or as you might know it from Lightroom, clarity. In Resolve, it's also just a simple slider down here. Alright, and then I'm gonna add some sharpening by going into the Blur tab, selecting Sharpen and turning down this radius just a bit. Now don't go overboard because your picture will look really ugly really soon. Alright, I'm pretty happy with the colors. I'm just gonna add a bit of more contrast. And I'm gonna do it by using the S-curve. I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out, but I'm gonna go back into the saturation and desaturate my image just a bit more. And then adding a bit more teal to my shadows. All right, this is looking pretty nice. I'm really happy with it. I'm gonna select everything but the LUT and Control D before and after. A really moody look straight out of a blockbuster. And that's it, I'm gonna end it here for this video. Once again, you can buy each of these looks as a LUT on the discount until January 7th. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the part two.